Stan Jabalisco here, uh, a viewer of uh, this channel and a reader of my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, has asked me to outline the functions of the individual components in some of the diagrams that appear in chapter 26, the chapter on amplifiers and oscillators. Uh, so right now we're looking at uh, figure 26-14, I believe. It is a Hartley oscillator circuit. It's called a Hartley oscillator and you can recognize that name by the fact that it has a tapped inductor in a tank circuit tank circuit meaning inductance capacitance circuit which determines the frequency of oscillation. The tap optimizes the impedance at which the feedback occurs thereby maximizing the amount of positive feedback. Uh, if you have to uh, find that position on the coil by experimentation. This happens to be a powdered iron coil because uh, you can recognize that because of these dashed lines and it's probably a toroid although it's difficult to uh, adjust the tap on a toroid coil. It's difficult but not impossible. Once you've found it, uh, you've found the optimum frequency. The center uh, value of this capacitor should be the frequency at which you want oscillation to occur. This is a PNP bipolar transistor with a negative power supply. Uh, it could just as easily be NPN and have a positive power supply. And you can also adapt this circuit for field effect transistor operation. Uh, this is a voltage divider, these two resistors right here. And I have not specified values because, again, they must be determined by experimentation as you put the circuit together depending on the particular components. This does not have to be a power transistor but it should be of course capable of dissipating the amount of power that it has to dissipate in order to operate. It operates basically as a class A amplifier. The resistor here and the resistor here comprise a voltage divider which places a certain negative voltage with respect to ground on the base of the transistor. The capacitor prevents the base from being shorted to ground uh, through the tank circuit and the coil. It's a blocking capacitor and it should be a fairly large value 0 0.01 microfarads something like that. It has nothing to do with determining the resonant frequency of this circuit here which determines the frequency of oscillation. This right here, this uh, resistor and capacitor, provide uh, additional assistance with the correct bias raising the uh, emitter of the transistor above ground for a direct current somewhere between 0 and minus 12 volts. But for signal it is at ground. This is a bypass capacitor right here, which lets the uh, which lets the emitter of the transistor. I hope I didn't say base. The emitter of the transistor uh, settle at radio frequency ground while being elevated above ground for uh, direct current. Uh, this, of course, uh, unless this tap were all the way down, uh, well, even if it were, the 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 uh, coil is essentially we're assuming a zero loss, zero DC loss wire. So this elevates the emitter above ground. So that's what this resistor, the emitter resistor, is for. This. Um, capacitor here is a bypass capacitor that places the collector at signal ground while allowing a negative voltage to
to exist there for direct current. So it doesn't uh, let direct current through, but it lets the signal through. So in effect, this uh, what we have here is a grounded collector circuit uh, in which the feedback will occur at, uh, it will be a positive feedback. Uh, it, and it's uh, not really, it doesn't really amplify because it is a, in effect, a grounded uh, collector uh, circuit. This is a blocking capacitor that keeps the output circuitry from interfering with the operation of the transistor. And in fact, the output is taken between the emitter and ground, also known as an emitter follower. So it's an emitter follower sort of impedance matching quasi-amplifier, and I say quasi because it doesn't really amplify, it just allows for feedback to take place. But if this frequency is adjusted uh, properly, uh, you will find that you get enough feedback so that the circuit will chase its own tail and the output will go back into the input and this, the uh, cycle will occur endlessly. That is a Hartley oscillator with a PNP bipolar transistor. So I hope I adequately outlined the functions of the individual components in figure 26-14, I believe it is, or 15. I'm not, I don't have the book in front of me. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I do. Let me check it. It's figure 26-14, figure 26-14 on page 449 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition. And again, I always recommend you get the paper-bound copy of, of any of my books because uh, electronic errors in diagrams and text occur uh, well, they don't occur because you're looking at it laid down on paper. Now, some of the electronic copies I've seen contain strange and mysterious and inexplicable errors, sometimes to the point of making the entire thing meaningless and Ill in illegible. That won't happen here with the paper edition. This uh, same oscillator circuit should appear in all editions of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, although the figure number will almost certainly be different. Again, this is figure 26-14, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, edition number 6, published in June of 2016 by McGraw-Hill and written by yours truly, Stan Jubilisco, signing off. Until next time, so long.